Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hey, Martha. Welcome to Watch What Crappens. Podcast about all that crap on Bravo. <laughs> that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker. That's Ronnie Karam over there. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hi. Back on Hi. the vineyard. Back on the vineyard. It's time for the Summer House Martha's Vineyard premiere, guys. Um, Sure is. Uh, So it's back. So glad it got a second season. Uh, Before we dive into it, just our usual announcements, which is a reminder, in case you have not been paying attention, that we are doing Netflix as a joke. uh, May 3rd at the Kookaburra Lounge in Hollywood, California. Come join us for a lovely, intimate show. It's going to be so fun. Um, and then, of course, we have our shows in London and Dublin and and uh, Birmingham. And that's, of course, Birmingham, UK, not Birmingham, Alabama. Sorry, Alabama. So go join us. Go to watchwhatcrappens.com to get tickets for those shows. And while you're at watchwhatcrappens.com, you can also find the links for our Patreon, patreon.com slash watchwhatcrappens. Get access to our weekly bonus episode. Uh, the plan is, I believe, the plan is to recap the valley on this week's bonus episode. Um, but you know, things can always change who knows, but that's the plan. So be sure to check that out. Last week we talked about top chef, the top chef premiere and all that stuff. So the bonus episode has all sorts of good stuff. And of course there's crappens on demand where you can actually watch us. I am broadcasting from beautiful New York city right now. There's the faint image of a skyscraper behind me and Ronnie is there with Bueller. Bueller's taking a nap right behind him, which is probably more visually exciting than a skyscraper i would say <laughs> I don't definitely know, more commanding tired from licking his wiener there he's like good night <laughs> and good night friends I've so martha's vineyard's back day. huh i said martha's vineyards but martha martha's vineyard is back summer house it sure is um sure yeah, is good to have the show back it's crazy having two summer houses on at one time i could use a little separation um, yes because it's a lot of people going from room to room saying we should do shots um it's a lot. but i do lo- <laughs> i do love it's a lot of show. room to room action a lot of walking down hallways a lot of like there's someone lying on a hammock yes etc this show is a great casting they did a really good job with this show very rare for a first year bravo show to get the casting so right that they bring everybody back like everybody's back, right? There's nobody missing. Well, the only girl missing from last year is Mariah, who got kicked off. Right, and yeah, Mariah's not back, and neither is the guy who's the flight attendant, and obviously Phil. I feel like last year they were kind of cycling through people to sort of figure out who their people are going to be, and this year the they're like, okay, this is the cast. I forgot about him. Remember, he was the one who kind of spoke like this. He like, <laughs> I liked him because I did like a weird Aaron Neville voice for him. Yes. Okay. And, and well, and obviously we do not have Silas, which is probably for the best. Well, we do um, have him on fucking FaceTime. I don't even face need time. on FaceTime. You know what I mean? Like, dude, aren't you doing something for the country? Just do that. <laughs> and then. Um, oh, Phil was the worst. Okay. Yeah. I see. I love okay, Phil. So I guess I didn't bring everybody back. That's all. <laughs> I love Phil. He was the worst. Of people to bring back, right? It was a pretty good amount. And then we have a new girl who I love. I love the new girl so far. She's great. She reminds me of like a, a like a little Phaedra, you know? She's very subtle. Too. Yes. Well, <laughs> very subtle. Very, like, very subtle character. She, she apparently uh, loves butter. half of her scenes are just her making faces at crab or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever they're doing. Or if someone makes a face, she's like, makes like a crazy face at it. And she's definitely doing Phaedra on the traders thing, which is that when people are talking, it just cuts to her like negotiating with a piece of food on her fork, making eyes at it, like yes. eating something. Mm, mm. Boiled eggs, boiled eggs, boiled eggs. Yeah. So we start. We're still centering this. Ep- we're still centering the show around Jasmine for some reason. Silas isn't there. I think last year it was like we're Jasmine and Silas, and we're like a married, so <laughs> we're the most mature people. And I think it's because it's a spinoff of Summer House, which is like the couple rules the roost, right? Kyle and Amanda, 
They're yeah. like the leads because they're a couple and everybody respects a couple more than a single person. So God for mm-hmm. fucking bad a single person has any say in anything. Let's, <laughs> let all the marrieds lead everything. So, um, yeah, I guess that's – she's still married, so I guess she's still, like, the, the lead character. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, and, but we, we obviously we do not have Silas because he has been deployed, and he must face um, – a very challenging situation, which is he will now have to iron his own pants. So Godspeed. Hope he can I figure it out. It. <laughs> I doubt it. He's probably got an iron in every port, that guy. <laughs> he probably is terrorizing some newbies, some like fresh out of basic training soldiers and making them all iron his pants. <laughs> hey, girl, it's me, Jazzy. I know I've been busy, but... You're still my favorite place for sun, good food, and black history. And we see some clips from last season. And she says, but so much has changed since last summer. My sister cousin Jordan, remember her? And uh, we see a clip of her saying, I consider Jordan my sister cousin. (laughs) Really? Well, it's gone downhill. With the sister cousin. I know. Well, we've barely spoken since last summer. But peep this, Martha. She's best friends with everybody else. (laughs) Nick and Tasia are still together. I think they were hanging out with Amir and his new girlfriend. Ding! And speaking of couples, Martha, I wonder if anything happened. (laughs) What is this? Martha's Vineyard is like, please stop. Martha's Vineyard's like, I literally have the Obamas here. I don't need your updates. (laughs) Jasmine is like some weird teen movie this season. Where she's just going to do the voiceovers in that voice. Like, (laughs) Martha, you're my favorite place for black history. And here's another thing, Martha. I bought some fish sticks, but they were expired. Can you believe it? Frozen but expired fish sticks. Gotta send them back, Martha. Speaking of couples and fish sticks, I wonder if anything happened between Mr. Alex and Miss Summer. But listen, notice I call them Mr. and Miss because they're not married like me. (laughs) Hey, Martha, are you married to Nantucket yet? What's going on with you two? (laughs) So then we get clips of the upcoming wackiness of the summer. And she's like, but you know how it is, Martha. I'm sure it's not all going to be fun and games. And then we cut to like sad things happening amongst which are Jordan losing her hair. She's like crying about losing her hair. And then, um, I don't know, sad. And then Bria... Oh, no, Nick Nick is, like, upset about something. He's like, I'm going through a lot. And Bria's saying, let it out, Nick. Let it out. So, um, and then we have our opening theme song, which is great. It just makes me upset that we never got to hear the classic Summer House theme song. Because um, I think, honestly, Ronnie, I would be okay having 10 seconds less of Kyle Cook peeing in a bush. So that way I could hear the classic melody of, I mean, there are children in this world that don't even know that Summer House has a theme song. I know. (laughs) You know what's really sticking to me is the Southern Hospitality one. I know a place where we can go. Oh, you're coming out out tonight. tonight. (laughs) I hate the Southern Hospitality one because it feels like it's a longer song that they chopped up. And so when it goes to like the last part, it goes, are you coming out tonight? It's like in a different key or octave or something. I don't know the musical term, but I hate it. I hate it so much. It's such a stalker song. (laughs) And I remember when that show came out, we're like, what a stupid theme song. I can't stop now. I I sing it all the time. I know a place where we can can go. go. Are you coming out tonight? (laughs) Okay, so this one is neither one of those shows, but it also has a theme song. Here's what I'll say for this one. Diction. I don't know what the fuck this song is saying. I want to have some fun in the Medi, but I know it gets in the way. This summer is about to go insane. What, What are the lyrics to this? I don't understand. I don't I don't know either, but it's like it's like fun. It's like a fun like do 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 do, you know? I like it. <laughs> I just need the word. I just am happy that there's a theme song, honestly. I just always want more theme songs in life. 
And I like that their um, font is better in the beach writing for the title. Summer House Martha's Vineyard. It looks so much nicer than just Summer House. It looks like Kyle peed Summer House into the sand. And this one looks like <laughs> nicely done. Yeah. Hey, Martha, love your logo. It's like, okay, Jasmine, stop talking to the island. Hey, Martha, why aren't you calling me back? <laughs> hey, Martha, it would be nice if I was included. <laughs> Even Martha, Martha's Vineyard hates Jasmine. Martha's like, why did you serve me carbs? I told you, I can't be eating carbs right now. Hey, Martha, you married yet? <laughs> hey, Martha, have you given up that unfulfilling single girl life? <laughs> hey, Martha, isn't it about time to start thinking about kids? Hey, so Martha, are you sober too because you're not pregnant? <laughs> So we're in New York City, and it's that, like, oh, look at how busy everything is, and people are making their way to the airport, and um, we cut to Jordan, she goes, this is life. <laughs> wow, Jordan's <laughs> in a great mood this season. She's in a great mood, yeah. And then we see Tampa and Sharice, Shanice. <laughs> Shasha is like, guess what, everyone? I'm on Summer House now. I can totally imagine Cherise crashing the Summer House cast if she if she had the chance. Hey, guys. Hey, Martha. It's Therese. I'm here to have a fun, wacky time with the youngins. Da, da. Da, da. Hey, hey, Martha. <laughs> Why did you pick up that champagne bottle, Martha? <laughs> No, Shanice. Shanice is really excited. Um, of course she's excited, because I think she's excited about literally everything that she does. Oh, I'm in Tampa! Oh. 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 <laughs> and uh, then we see Preston, and he's like, you know, he's excited too. He's like, I'm more excited by, this, by the second to see everyone. And then in Austin, it's Amir with his girlfriend Natalie saying goodbye to him, you know. Let me tell you what Preston's very excited about this year. Caps. He's very excited about a very certain shape of knit cap. Have you noticed? <laughs> he wears like three of them in this episode. And then, you know, we follow him on the Instagram, on the gram. And I was like, wow, he really is addicted to these little hats now. What do you think it is? He was shaved head last year, right? Might as well face it, I'm addicted to caps. <laughs> 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 so here's my I don't remember issue. what his hairline I don't really looks like. I have an issue. It's just like a very specific shaped hat that he has in 20 different colors. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it was about this year that he was I like, don't remember you know what his I'm hat. going for? That shape of cap. And I'm going to wear it every fucking outfit. I'm just going to get, that's my thing now. It's going to be these caps. Because he didn't have hair last year. So I don't think it's like a newly bald thing. Because I think a lot of times when guys lose their hair, they go through a moment where they're like oh my god what if people see me as i'm bald? i have to go in a baseball cap everywhere i have to be in a hat it's like you people know you're bald like it's okay you can't change mm. it you know what i mean hate yourself for things you can change not for things you can't change that's what i say. i legitimately don't remember what his hair or hairline or lack there of hair if there is a lack there of hair i don't remember what that looks like and i also don't remember his cap from this episode i like blocked out his headwear oh my god just go I'm on sorry. Instagram right now. It's every picture. Okay. It's like I'm going to Preston. Let me go visit our, 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 my dear friend, Preston. He's, Hi, Preston. Hi, Preston. This is Padma Lakshmi coming to look at your hat. Did you up at the beginning of a recap over hats? Uh, hold on one moment. Here we go. Going to Preston. Preston. Preston Mitchum, right? Mm -hmm. Preston Mitchum. More like Preston not famous like my dear friend Ali Wong. Wow. Oh, so oh, okay. It's <laughs> this is it's it's a knit cap. Yeah, but is that what we're like talking? That shape. It's the shape of the knit cap, but it's in yeah. different. This one he wears a blue one. He wears a uh, leopard. It's like one. a gumdrop or a thimble. Yes, it's a gumdrop shape on his head. I don't know what it is about the hat, but he just loves that shape. Now, see, it's everywhere. That's I'm his. Every it's his iconic look. Oh wait, no, no. Can you know what? Here's him with a with a wide brimmed hat. That was that's last his year's last look. Season. Yeah, wide brim. Like TBT to my other <laughs> hat obsession last year. <laughs> it might rain, so I want some more parts of my shoulders to be covered. <laughs> okay, um, so back to the show. So people are getting ready to go, <laughs> and then we're we really see... on one today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Martha, did you see Preston's hat? <laughs> hey, Martha, why won't Preston's hat call me back? <laughs> 
<laughs> go to see Amir, who lives in Austin. Um, speaking of Instagrams, I follow his. He's one of these people selling zillion dollar houses in Austin that are like as big as a closet. He's like, this is only $3 million and has a view of the neighbor's trailer. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. And then he gives you like a, a full walkthrough and you're like, I, maybe $3 million isn't bad. I mean, he is really hot. I love, first of all, I love Amir. And I also love his little real estate videos he posts because he's always talking so far away from the microphone. So they're always really echoey. And it's always like, hey, you're looking for your first house. Why not choose this place? It has a kitchen, beautiful cabinetry, and doorways. It's everything you could want in a house. So call me if you want to make your dreams come true. <laughs> it's like very local, like a local commercial. And there are a lot of hints in this episode that he's dating a nightmare named Natalie. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Good Natalie. for you, Oz. She's dropping him off at the airport at the ass crack of the morning, and she says bye to him like this. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, she's satanic. I didn't even notice that. You just know <laughs> she's satanic. <laughs> that, is a, that is a satanic girlfriend bye. Yep. It is. And Martha's Vineyard is shaped like a square penis. Somebody had to say it. But they show an outline <laughs> of Martha's Vineyard, and it looks like I'm the looking. squarest, most rectangular penis. Martha's Vineyard shape. <laughs> really? It's nuts on the bottom and that's the big a big square dick. Wait a second, Ron. Are you looking at the right Martha's Vineyard? I'm to me, it looks almost like a... They to me, it, it looks like someone wearing pantaloons, like, dancing. Or not oh, pantaloons, this, like harem pants. This, whatever shape they're doing showing splits. me here on Google is not the shape they were showing me on the TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you the look one? down, if you look down at okay, Google Martha <laughs> Vineyard's map, okay, and then look at the third image, and okay. it shows it shows more of the square uh, penis. That's freaking Massachusetts. <laughs> oh. Damn it! But I your point quit. is still well taken. Job to not doing this anymore. <laughs> Fuck this! Fuck this! Massachusetts does though. Now that you say it, look. Somewhat like a gun, but like a, like a, not like a gun, like a, like one of those guns that you put dollar bills in and you shoot bunny out of. But why would they circle, or why would they penis? put that on TV instead? And why, Martha's Vineyard looks like a scary fish. It looks like a horned <laughs> fish now that I look it up. The, okay, wait, do you see what I was talking about? That Martha's Vineyard sort of looks like someone in harem pants doing the splits. Like there's yeah. like two little boots, two little shoes that. on the sides, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally see it. All right, so it's day one of 15 of this recap. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Bria is first in the house, and she's brought Ben's favorite cast member I over. can't. Milo, the cutest little wiener dog in the world. I just don't like Milo. I mean, Milo, Milo. hasn't actually not done anything to offend me this season yet, so maybe this will be a good like rebound season for me and Milo. But like last season, I really could not deal with Milo. This season, he's been inoffensive. But I do not think that Milo is that cute. Milo's one of those dogs that doesn't talk. Because you know how, like, dogs... I mean, I know dogs don't talk, guys. It's not a Disney movie. But dogs do kind of talk. Like, they have a voice. Like, Bueller will look at you and you know what he's saying. Milo just doesn't talk. He just looks like he's silent. And I don't like that in a dog. <laughs> you need to know the voice. Yeah, does Milo... Yeah, Milo does not have a voice. Mm -mm. You're right. I, that's actually a really great point. Like, you know, he's not like dogs, a, rrr, 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 rrr. my name's Milo. He's not like that. He's not no, like he's a, not rrr, like rrr, 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 rrr. my name is Milo. Yeah, he's just, he's like, you know how some dogs in cartoons can talk, but then some of them never talk. I think he's like one, Pluto. Like some of them you hear just barking. I think he's one of the dogs that doesn't talk. And then there are other yeah. dogs that do talk. Yeah. So uh, if you have an issue and you need to uh, alert everyone that Cruella de Vil is up to some bullshit, you know, Milo's not helping <laughs> with Milo's that. Not that. <laughs> Yeah. He's not doing that. Oh, he's not doing anything. He's yeah. just like, whatever. He they're not it's not turning, my problem. They're not turning wiener dogs into coats. What does he care? You know? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so Bria is yelling through the house, but nobody's there, you know? And she's like, they ask Bria, so do you think Milo's glad to be back? And she actually answers it like it's a real question. She says, yeah, I think Milo's excited to be back because I'm his home. So he's always happy to be where I am because... I'm home for him, just like he's my home. No, you just feed him food. Sorry. He's, he's not like... <laughs> he's an he's... eater and you're a feeder. There. <laughs> yeah, it's codependent. 
So uh, then Bria, Bria's saying that she likes this house. They're in a different house this year, and it's a bigger house, and she likes it, and she's going to pick the best room that she wants, like the queen I am. So she takes a really big room, and then um, uh, then we see, we go back to Jasmine, That's who's so like, scary, oh, it's... Isn't it? Whoever is there first gets the biggest room. Why is that? That's not fair. They all have to come from different places and have different tra travel schedules. Okay. Well, usually people gather in the middle and then they all decide their rooms together. But it's Bria and Bria's not going to do that. Bria's not. And none of them do it, actually. Everybody gets there first. They just, like, the guys are last. Fuck them. Yeah. That's actually true. So uh, then Jasmine's like, oh, it's summertime. Okay. And so she arrives and it says Jasmine and Silas, but then it crosses off Silas's name. And so for people who don't watch the summer house, Martha's Vineyard gossip, you might for one moment say, oh, thank God she's liberated. She finally left this terrible man and she can finally start living the rest of her glorious life. But no. I know. I, I really did have hope for a minute there. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I, li I actually, despite everything, I actually really like Jasmine, even though she's been like a wretch to her, <laughs> to her friends. I, there, I do like her, but, um, the, the Silas situation is terrible and he drags her down. I'm not a hater, but she, she's with Silas and she not yeah. only, she not only, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, couples that have been together forever and you're like, well, maybe he just became that way. Maybe you never yeah. really know somebody until a few years into it, they say. So maybe he just became a controlling misogynistic piece of shit, but they haven't been together that like she's with him on purpose and he's a misogynistic piece of shit. So yeah, uh, she seems um, just too smart to be with someone like that. That's what's weird, right? She seems like a, a, a smart person with like awareness. But um, I, yeah, I don't know. I think that like compulsion to, to start a family can just really put blinders on people, you know? Yeah. I think people start freaking out, you know? It's like, I'm not going to find him. I'm not going to find him. I'm almost 30. Almost 30. <laughs> and then before you know it, you're just marrying a Silas, you know? Yeah, yeah they jackets. just, the Silas's, they just wait around because they know they can scoop up the, the desperate people, you know? Yeah, but you know what? There's also something to be said for just never settling because sometimes settling is good like sometimes you have to realize the ballpark you're in you know what i mean yeah <laughs> sometimes you do have to take what you can get there is a time though there's like a i think it's a fine art obviously i haven't figured it out but i think there is a fine art to it where you just know it's like this is the best i can do not out of desperation right. but just out of just being realistic you know what i mean you can't just sit around yeah. your whole life waiting for a hemsworth not even the ugly one no, but what I think the thing that I dislike the most about Silas, you know, one might think it was how condescending he was to his wife and to people in the house and how patronizing he was and how controlling and how rude he was and how um, inflexible he was. And those things were probably the worst. But I, I think the thing that really graded me was, if I remember correctly, he set up like two computer monitors on like the dining room, like the kitchen dining room table. And then like held his like has made his little office in the public area and then got mad at people when they're being loud while he was working. I was like, no, no, sir. And he's also one uh -uh. of those people that fucks as loudly as possible in the house just to get. Everywhere. Yeah, Ugh, it's just gross. he gets mad when people disrupt him when he like makes his office the public space. But then he goes and fucks loudly and disturbs everyone else in the house. No, yes, not into it. Yeah, he sucks. So don't worry. Silas isn't here, but our hatred for him is. So that's that's I didn't make that up, the by the way. Huh? I didn't make that up. Didn't he set up two laptop, like two two monitors in the in the kitchen, right? I don't. I didn't remember without you telling me, but when you told me, it popped into my head like it was real. So okay, it's, it's real we'll just say it happened to believe it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, okay. okay, so Jasmine comes to the house and uh, Bria has made up with Jasmine because they saw each other at a party and they partied together and Jasmine got wasted with her again. And that's really all she wanted because really everybody didn't like Jasmine because she was an asshole with her husband. But once you get Jasmine away from the husband and she can be herself, she's cool. The problem is she's still with the husband. So unless you're just always going to find a way to hang out with her without the husband, sorry, she's still going to revert to being an asshole the second she's with her husband. I've seen it happen a zillion times and I will not hang yep. out with those people. We all know it's a trap. Yeah. So Jasmine's like, I'm, I'm ready. Hey Martha, I'm ready for the turn up. Where is everybody? So we then see uh, Jordan and summer in a car together and summer's like, 
are you excited to talk to Jasmine? And Jordan's like, no, but I'm not angry or anything. Um, and Summer's like, well, I just, you just want to like clarify, right? Like, cause you're supposed to be, be on vacation with her for two weeks. So you should just like clarify with her. Yeah. Just still the law, Clary. <laughs> um, and yeah. Summer's like, uh, Jordan's like, yeah, that part. Cause I told her, I was like, you weren't authentic last summer. You were trying to push people together. I mean, it just made me crazy. And then we see a clip of, <laughs> of her doing it where she's just like, hmm. So you're still pretending to be happy single? Oh, God, that's rough. <laughs> All right, let's order some lunch. Can we please order her someone to be with? Because she's just misery walking. Am I right? <laughs> Can we get, do you have any specials for chronically single friends? Hey, you know what? Uh, waitress, let me help out. I see you've got some ketchups that need to be married. So I, I'm really good at that. Let me just bring them together. I'll tell you what, the ketchup sure have more of a chance than this sad sack. Am I right? <laughs> So Summer's like, yeah, you've been friends the longest. And Jordan goes, well, maybe we weren't as good friends as I thought. So Jordan basically says that she just felt like Jasmine wasn't being herself. And she was like trying to come off as a perfect wife. And, you know, she was like dressed cleanly and she was in a state of perfection rather than being like the lighthearted, goofy, carefree person that she knew. Yeah. So then Jasmine and Bria are in the kitchen talking and Bria is asking about Silas, which why bother? Please don't. She'll tell you anyway. Yep. And Jasmine's like, if I sit too long with that thought, I'll cry about it, Martha. <laughs> and she says that they may have had some trouble last year. And then we see clips of him being like, women cook. Men work, women cook. Yeah. You me wife, wrong, me husband. Yeah. <laughs> Don't serve me starches. So Jasmine says that he's, he's been deployed and he's going to be gone for 10 months in Eastern Europe and they just celebrated a year of marriage and uh, she needs her friends now more than ever, which is always what happens with these couples too. It's like they put up the walls around their marriage. They're like the, everything, they're, they're, they're the married couple and they do that their thing and then now it's like, I need my friend so badly. It's like, oh, now you need us. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. So then Jordan and Summer arrive and everybody is like hugging and they're flipping their hair at each other because they've all got long hair at this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, flipping the hair at each other, which I thought was really funny. And then they um, go choose their rooms. And uh, Jasmine's like, well, last summer, I take it Jordan and Summer got really close, real close away from me, Martha. Maybe I just wasn't <laughs> available. Hmm? So cue Summer. <laughs> yeah, you weren't available because you were being a fucking perfect wife over there. Everybody, yeah. everybody else wasn't good enough for you. Okay, so go do that some more. Yeah. Um, and then Summer says that her friend Noelle is coming to the house, and she's like, I know she's going to fit in well. She's a talker. And um, then we see the basement of this place, and uh, the basement is like a giant rec room that's meant for children. It's like four bunk beds and a regular bed, and then like like a padded cell with with beds in it and it's See, I literally so des- nice i thought the basement was so nice and I no loved i loved it don't get me wrong bed wall that they did where they're like those custom built in bunk bed type things that are full or queen size mattress. i'm just saying it's, it was like all so soft and so carpeted i would have loved it but i'm just saying like for bravo you know it was gonna be like a thing and um it was definitely designed for like children and not adults you know so uh, the girls were like, yeah, this is not, we're not staying in here. This will be for the boys. Yeah, so they make the boys stay down there. Now that is kind of horrifying. That's a lot of masturbating going to be happening in that room. They're going to, um, it'll be a lot of masturbating and it'll be a lot of, um, a lot of silliness is going to happen down there. There's going to be a lot of, they're just going to be wrestling and do, like, you put a bunch of guys in one room for like a vacation house, they are going to be. It could be a disaster. Wrestling? That, that you know, they're going to be like, you know, straight guys, they wrestle and they... No, no, I don't know. They do. Uh, they do that. They, really they love it. It's going to be a mess down there. It's going to stink. The point is this. It's going to stink it's like farts stink. and That's wrestle true. juice. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, Alex is in his car and he's talking on the phone in the douchiest fucking way you can. Don't you have Bluetooth in your car? Like, I hate to be this person, but seriously... <laughs> He's doing that thing where he's like holding it upside down and talking into it like a microphone. And uh, he's talking to He's Preston. a musician. Yeah, he's in the music, guys. He has a collective, so that's kind of how we talk. 
Yeah. Listen, when you're a musician, like when you're an artist, you got to hold your cell phone the way you'd hold a microphone. And I say this as someone who's related to John Legend in some way. <laughs> so then Shanice shows up and then they yell a lot. They're like, oh my God, it's Shanice. She's like, oh my God, it's the girls. And she's like, hey, we better turn up. And like, we better do shots. She's like, we better turn up with some shots. I'm like, yeah, we better do some shots. <gasps> Yes, yeah, some shots. So the good thing with Shanice is that she is full time this season, which is really good because we love Shanice, and uh, I love that she drives Alex crazy because Alex to me is like to me Alex is the biggest villain on the show because he tries so hard to be the one that's like the most down and the most soulful and the most introspective and the most thoughtful, but he's just like a fuck boy who is very superficial and only cares about himself. And so I love that she sees that in him. And uh, so I'm really glad that she's there to like drive him nuts. You know who else does that on this show? The person he has a problem with, Summer. Um, yep. And I don't trust Summer either because of that, because of how she mm. acts like that. Uh, yeah. She's very like, yeah, you know, I, felt, I, I felt like it was like our spirits. But unfortunately, <laughs> his spirit didn't really vibe with my spirit the way that I thought spirit should be. It's like, shut up. You're just nuts. <laughs> You're just nuts. So nuts with this like hokey talk. So um, Jasmine announces that, guys, I'm now on this mocktail life because Alex converted me. You're looking at your newest mocktail mommy. Spoiler <laughs> alert. I know. Like, she's, and then I can't believe she has the uh, audacity to say, I'm your new mocktail mommy and then deny that she's pregnant. <laughs> like you literally yeah. said mommy already. <laughs> and it's blatantly obvious that you're pregnant. Like we can see it. So do we have to put up with her next season with a kid? Because I can't. Oh, it's going to be awful. She's not it will be bring awful. Kid, is she? Or Don't do you bring think a kid she's to the summer leave house. The kid with her parents and then be like, "Hell no!" She's going to brand. She's going to brandish that baby around this house. She's going to be on the biggest power trip. Can you guys just keep it down? It's nap time. Can you just keep it down a little bit? Sorry, Martha. Can you just tell him to be quiet? I'm sorry. I'm crying. It's just I haven't had much sleep. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> When you bring another human into this world, you realize like suddenly your life is not about you anymore. It's about this little creature who just looks into your eyes and just like all they see is you and have just unconditional love for you. It's like, yeah, congratulations, welcome. Like everyone's, you're saying the same shit that everyone said for thousands of years well, before I'm you. Well, I'm sorry to act like my argument has a little more credence in this politics discussion, but I'm raising a taxpayer. While you guys are fighting about who gets what bunk bed, I am here just trying to be the best mother that I can, okay? I am hashtag a boy mom, okay? Does <laughs> any of you understand that kind of stress? You know, that's what all next season will be, which will actually probably be hilarious TV. She will be terrible with this. So everyone's like, I mean, nice, I guess, that you're a mocktail lady now. And Shanice is like, that's great. Where's the tequila? <laughs> so uh, Bria's like, um, she's an Aries, so she needs her space. And then Shanice tells us, yeah, well, I'm just like super excited to be with the Playboy girls because we like party together. We love doing shots. And like, hopefully we can find some guys. Like, we're outside. That's where you find guys, right? <laughs> 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 so uh nick is in a stupid hat in a car with a mirror <laughs> you really i mean i'm sorry i can't get behind the hat so nick is like uh so did you talk to jordan and amir's like uh no you know she left me in the friend zone and that's basically i don't know if any of you have watched my real estate videos but um <laughs> I'm with a girl named Natalie. Um, I was shooting a kitchen last week, and I don't know if you saw, but I was like, and this is a, a touch faucet. You touch it, and it turns on, and then you could just hear, hey, baby. That was Natalie. <laughs> hey, babe, I just thought you'd want to touch me instead of a faucet for once, okay, babe? Um, get your goddamn hands off that faucet before I kill, kick that bitch's ass. It's like, babe, it's, it's the sink. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Amir Lancaster. Just want to tell you about the friend zone. It's on sale now. It's a great deal. This neighborhood is blowing up right now. So if it's something you'd be interested in, it's a new lifestyle, and I think it'd be great for you. So contact me, Amir Lancaster, realtor from Austin. <laughs> you're not just buying a house. You're buying a lifestyle. 
<laughs> so Nick is like, so, um, cause Amir is basically like, yeah, um, I'm not gonna be very handsy with, I'm not gonna be handsy with anyone, uh, this summer. I can't do that. I've got a girlfriend. And if I did that, I would wake up with a knife to my throat. <laughs> Nick is like, oh, you know who Lorena Bobbitt is? He's like, uh, no, should I educate myself on that? Yes. Yes. Definitely should. <laughs> There's a generation who not only don't know about the Summer House theme song, they don't know about Lorena Bobbitt. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? So yeah. then Alex is telling us, hey, Martha, your boy is back, <laughs> which really doesn't compare to, hey, Martha. So sorry, Alex, try again. Yeah. Uh, and he's like trying to be all smooth, and then he can't open the trunk of his car, uh, which is like stupid. <laughs> which is funny because this episode features Alex, who hates... Shanice and Shanice who hates Alex showing how similar they are because he can't open the trunk but then later we see her unable to open a door so. <laughs> that's right that's right and for those who want some context on why Alex doesn't like Shanice it's because he read headlines about her being um, like a stalker to her ex and so he's like that's like, weird famous, gross so I don't like stalkers so. I have like a fourth cousin named John Legend, and I just can't be near stalker energy, you know? <laughs> um, so Shanice is like, oh my God, it's you. <laughs> you came just in time. We're working on your menu. We, we've gotten as far as asparagus. <laughs> He's a vegan. He's a vegan. <laughs> He's too. weird. And then they do this weird thing where she goes, He's like, she like, says that thing, and then Summer goes, He's weird. And it goes to commercial. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, okay. Summer, like, There's tension here, obviously, right? Because Shanice, we know why. But Summer, we're like, wait a minute. They were fine last year. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Wait a second. They sort of had romantic chemistry that I definitely was thinking about all year long until this premiere. Oh God, it's just been bugging me this whole time. I'm like, I wonder what happened to that girl in John Legend's distant, 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 <laughs> distant, distant, distant cousin. <laughs> I wonder what happened with that girl that came in for the last three episodes of the season and um, sat on a bed with John Legend's very, 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 very distant cousin, and they talked about the the universe. What happened with them? So when we come back from break, Summer's like, yeah, Alex and I met last year. And then we see clips of them flirting and Alex being like, yeah, I'm meditating so I can access something beyond me. And she goes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm specifically referencing Chrissy Teigen, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I don't know if you, that's what you're thinking about too. And she says, after we left the house, we'd hang out if we were in the same city, and that's about it. <laughs> she's like trying to pretend she's a cool girl about it, but she's visibly dressed. Yeah. yeah, she's well, she's also trying to be coy. Like, if I were in New York, we'd hang out. And if he was in LA, we'd hang out. It's like, okay, you guys had sex. So um, uh, Alex comes in and he like sees both Summer and Shanice. So he it's like two of his least favorite people because right. they see him as the fuck boy that he is. And so when fuck boys are, when people know who the fuck boy is, they hate them. So the, the fuck boy hates those people. So he's like really uncomfortable. Um, so guess what Shanice wants? A shot. She wants a shot, guys. <laughs> do you want to do a shot? He's like, no. No, no shot. She goes, oh, just checking. <laughs> what if it was a shot of asparagus? That would be nuts. People do that right here. <laughs> and then he goes off. He goes downstairs to inspect the bedrooms downstairs. And uh, they're like, he came in looking like Rico Suave. So um, I guess that was Bria who said that, not Shanice. So he's like downstairs. He's like, whoa, that's crazy. And then he comes back upstairs. He's like, what's up, Summer? And she just doesn't respond. Yeah. So then uh, Preston comes and he's like, guess who's back? Me in a hat. <laughs> Originally, I met Jasmine through Silas, my fraternity brother, and then they introduced me to people. But through everybody, I bonded with Jordan. So much so that now I call her my wife. <laughs> Jasmine, you know somewhere Jasmine's like, finally. <laughs> I also like Preston. 
making this big thing of guess who's back as if he were like the outrageous star of season one. <laughs> and so, um, Alex, uh, Alex shows Preston the basement and everything. That's how I walk into a target. I'm like, hi, I'm home. <laughs> but to be fair, also everyone this season does that. Everyone's like, guess who's back. I'm like, okay, you were also not the star. I don't know who was the star last season, to be honest. Um, Milo. I know Milo. you hate to hear it, but maybe there was it was a clear Milo and present danger. Or maybe it was the German guy Simon. Well, oh, Simon, look at my fancy car I got out front. That's for you, Bria. Wow, I just actually a watch just materialized right here on my desk, Ryan. Just by saying his name, you just gave me a watch magically. This is crazy. Oh my God, a used watch from 1974 <laughs> from from Simon's company. That's insane. Um, so anyway, uh, basically the producers are like, so uh, Preston, are you a top bunk or a bottom bunk? He's like, I'm on the side bunk, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and, the girls uh, are no, no. Like, yeah, I, I think it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. So then he's like, I'm not sleeping in the basement. And Jordan tells him, there's another room that nobody knows about. Hurry. Get it. We didn't tell Alex about it, which is so shady. I love that they just left and that, fed Alex to the woods. Uh, fed Alex to the wolves. Huh? <laughs> In this case, the wolves being a bunk bed room. But it is also funny that Alex did not have like the thought that maybe he should explore the rest of the house. <laughs> he just saw it downstairs and was like, okay. So, um, yeah, they give him a nice room. They get Preston a nice room, which was great because I love that. I love that Alex didn't get it. So then the girls in Preston are taking shots in the kitchen. Um, shots, I want a shot, I want a shot, I love shots. So you take a shot and Preston goes, wow, this is fun. This is like Jamaica part 17. <laughs> and Summer explains, this summer, Preston and Jordan and Shanice and I went to Jamaica. Some people in the house might feel some sort of way because they were excluded. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as they were planning this trip, Jasmine was at home practicing her lines. Hey, Jamaica, your girl is back. Hey, Jamaica, your girl is... It's me. Hey, Jamaica. Hey, I'm not coming, Jamaica. Hey, Jamaica, why didn't you call me back? <laughs> I just wanted to say hi to Jamaica. Hey, Jamaica. I said hey, Jamaica, five times in five minutes. Have you ever said hey, Jasmine? <laughs> Oh, Jamaica. So, um, uh, to Preston, Preston goes, Jasmine was not invited. I like that everybody <laughs> else is being subtle. They're like, Well, some people may not have been invited. He's like, That bitch, Jasmine, I hate her, and so does my leopard cap. And Jordan goes, Sometimes you just can't invite everybody, which is hilarious because she literally starts a fight later this episode about not being invited somewhere. <laughs> her and Summer are the ones, and now they're, they're going to be the most offended about not being invited somewhere in about five minutes. <laughs> By the way, most offended about going to what sounds like an awful event. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, if there's an event that you're like, why don't you invite me to your event? And your friend goes, it was on a Facebook events page. <laughs> Just, that's not it's a like, fun event. You know what I mean? Are you really going to be complain about not getting invited to a rooftop event held by a music collective in Brooklyn, like literally just go anywhere else in the world in New York City and you'll have a better time. Go see Les Mis or yeah. whatever's playing. And when you when you want to go someplace, <laughs> but then the organizer of the event goes, I mean, are you on the newsletter? Goes, no, I'm not going to your fucking event. Who even <laughs> argues about it? Oh dear. So um uh so Preston and Jordan and Bria go off to go shopping for dinner tonight. Uh, because, by the way, if there's one thing that this cast can do more than any other cast, more than like Top Chef, let's be honest, this cast can cook and they cook every single episode. They put out such a spread. I just want I just want to be invited to their spread at one day because it always looks so good. Even this even this episode with Bria's crazy seasoning, which they never even circled back on. Like, did she over season or not? I don't know. So um, Amir and Nick show up at the house and Amir's like, wow. This is literally gorgeous. And look, it's a playground. So guys, if you're looking to start your new lifestyle on Martha's Vineyard, come to our house for an open house and open your heart to perhaps your new life. Mir Lancaster, realtor. <laughs> 
And he talks about how he's in a relationship with Natalie and they've been together almost a year. And if he flirted with anybody, she's gonna hang him by his toes, cut his penis off, and then parade it to the house and let everyone know what would happen to him if she ever touched her man again. Baby. <laughs> So then Wacky Summer plays a wacky snake game and puts one of those jump out snakes in a chips canister yeah. or whatever. And uh, she's like, that is hilarious. And yeah. then the men are showed the basement. Yeah. And um, this is like, this is the perfect room for a mirror. You know, he, he like loves, he loves a room like this. So he's excited. Um, and uh, Why? and Alex is like, yeah, man, Preston got a room that I didn't even know about. I mean, I didn't even get invited to that room. Um, and basically this season is all about, so far is about not being invited to places, whether it's a music collective, Jamaica, or a bedroom upstairs, right? Right. So then over at the fish market, they're picking their fish and you know, they're all alive, the crustaceans, the crustaceans of it all. And like, I don't want to eat the lobster. I just feel bad now because now I've met it. <laughs> <laughs> the lobster's like, I'm fine being killed. I just don't want to be killed while that dog looks at me. <laughs> Milo's like, rough, rough, motherfucker. <laughs> the lobster's like, see, this dog doesn't, doesn't even have a voice. I'm a lobster and I have a voice. Why would you kill the only animal that you know with a voice? <laughs> Milo's like, <gasps> why would you... Look at me. I am a robust. Why Why don't you just take me on as a pet? I will be your pet. I'm a great addition to the house. You don't have to eat me. <laughs> it really is disturbing to me, the boiling them alive thing. And I don't know. I had like a whole moment with myself where I was like, well, why is that worse than just chopping their heads off? And I think because chopping their heads are off is easier. But then they're so scared the whole time before that. I don't know. Whatever. I don't, I don't need to <laughs> litigate the whole thing. But it really, I don't like watching them boil something and then just throw a living thing in it. It's disturbing. Like we're monsters. It's, it's we're not monsters. the humans are monsters. We are. It's not the humane way of uh, killing a lobster. But fun fact, lobsters pee through the, the things right here. So you know what? And lobsters, by the so way, they deserve it. <laughs> for their disgusting peeing habits disgusting they also are we should, we should only kill disgusting things <laughs> also lobsters are so like male lobsters are so vicious they will like when they are mating they will like tear claws off of little, little lobsters and everything they are just they are monsters so don't uh, don't feel too bad for them I do. Except I for the fact that like they're totally defenseless against us. To me. Sounds like some human <laughs> propaganda. They deserved it. You know who's really mean? Fucking cows. Assholes. <laughs> <sighs> cows yeah. Poor lobsters. Every time I pass a cow, I like I might be feeling self confident and every time I pass on I just hear boo. Boo. <laughs> so I killed them. I killed all of them. I cooked them for my family. No, there were some <laughs> moo. Moo. <laughs> No, no, Are you bad. sure? I'm bad. pretty sure they were saying they were giving me a thumbs down. It's like they have hooves. They can't even do that. Uh, All right. Okay. Uh, so now the new girl shows up, Noelle, and she's like, I'm here. And there's like <laughs> lots of squealing. And it's my favorite character, a squealing bimbo. I love mm. a bimbo on a show. I don't know that she is a bimbo, but that's like what no. she's trying to present. She's like, <laughs> She's, she's like Southern Belle. Girl. She's like, I'm in one of the biggest companies in the world. Alpha, 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 bitch. <laughs> <laughs> alpha, cap, alpha. And Summer's like, I met Noelle, Noelle through her roommate, who I sometimes see when I came to New York. I was like, Does that, did that mean Alex? I don't think it was Alex. I don't know. I don't know why. But either way, she met her through a roommate. She's got a, she's got a, a solid fucking roster in New York. Is basically what we're learning. <laughs> summer, summer, summer is she just she she is summer knows how to live, has summer a life, knows how to yeah. live a life. She does. So they put Noelle in this one room on the first floor that actually has two beds in it, and she's like, Girl, shut up, I have two beds. What? So, um, she uh, she likes it. So anyway, um, then Nick and Alex are talking about um, Noelle, and Alex is saying that she's definitely giving some Alpha Kappa Alpha energy, or AKA, and she is indeed a sister of AKA, the Alpha Kappa Alpha organization. And then Nick says, he's like, I can tell a lot about a person. How they fly, it correlates. If you fly sloppy, you're sloppy. You're 
straw hat has a horizontal stripe that matches the horizontal stripe on your stupid shirt. I can't with this guy. Like, how does he do that? Does he buy two of the shirts so he could take off the cloth, so he could use one of the shirts as a stripe? I mean, it's exactly the maybe same. Maybe he has... Maybe he has ribbons that he can like swap in and out on the hat to match his ensemble. Maybe. I mean, he really loves that straw hat from like the state fair in the 1920s. He loves it. It's definitely his look. I don't know if you fly sloppy, that means that you are sloppy. Um, I think the the better correlation is if you you present yourself sloppy, you probably are sloppy. (laughs) But I don't know if it has anything to do with the flying. I don't know. Here's what I know. Your obsession with stripes on your hat is disturbing. What is it with the guys on the show and hats? It's like, there's this is too much hat conversation for one recap. So I'm going to be past it. So then um, we go to Noelle, who's rolling around on her bed like she's the luckiest girl in the world. She's like, look at me, a bed, a bed. And then she gets up and tries to unpack her suitcase and can't kind of can't quite figure it out. She's like, which part should I unpack first? And then she just falls backwards, <laughs> trying to fall on the bed, but she falls on the ground. And then she I just think... like sits on the ground and starts like <laughs> looking around the room, thinking about it. Yeah, because she like basically trips and falls backwards and in, into the crevasse between the two beds. And then yeah, I feel like she's sitting there like, "Wow, I just made my just made my debut on national television. The first thing I did was fall on my ass. This is do I just bail now? Do I go back to Atlanta now, or do I do I stick it out?" So then the guys are down in the basement and they're like, we'll call this the man cave. And Nick's Creative. like, well, but what's going to happen when Taser and Nat comes up? I mean, what are we going to have to put up a sheet to fuck? And Amir's <laughs> like, um, Natalie will not be doing that. And if I even suggest it, she's going to rip off my ear. So it's my <laughs> asshole. I'm not going to be able to poop and poop's going to start coming out of my mouth until I choke on it and die. <laughs> You've heard of human caterpillar. How about just like human 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 you're just attached to yourself and poop right from your anus into your mouth it's terrible what she will do to you so then uh, summer and shanice are in the kitchen and shanice is like what did you guys think of Shana, of amir's girlfriend did she like shots <laughs> and summer goes um i felt that amir's girlfriend was very standoffish i'm like I believe that, but also you're Summer. <laughs> you're literally the most standoffish person on this cast, so I'm sure that's not a surprise. I feel like there's probably, so, you know that Summer's the sort of person who gives a lot of standoffish energy out there and then a surprise when people are kind of like, oh, like Frosty back. And she's like, they're standoffish, gross. It's also, you can't have two standoffish people, otherwise someone's gonna get, you know, like shot because like the standoff, you know, take 10 paces yeah. and you stand. It's called a standoff. You can't have two right. people playing the standoff. Wah, um, wah, wah. Also, I feel like Summer's the type to be like, that girl's like jealous. Yeah, so. she like thinks we wanna steal your man. Like She's like, yeah girl, like, no one wants your man. Yeah, Shanice is like, yeah, I wanted you, Jordan, right? And she goes, yeah, well, we don't have any beef. It's the water under the bridge, specifically the Jaws Bridge. And we see a picture of the Jaws Bridge. It's like, ding. Yeah. So then um, Alex is talking about how he he's not seeing anybody, like, for sure, for sure, just kind of like playing, it, playing around. And meanwhile, yeah. Summer's talking about him. And she's saying, yeah, well, the last time I saw him, he said that he's a fuck boy and he wants to stay a fuck boy. <laughs> Yeah, fuckboy who runs a music collective. By the way, you can't run a music collective and not be a fuckboy. Because I don't even know what a music collective is, to be honest. (laughs) It just sounds like the sort of thing that a fuckboy would invent. (laughs) It's just the sort of thing a fuckboy would would invent to get a girl into bed. I think it's one of those things where your neighbors are like, we should all get together and bring our extra books, and then we can shop from each other's books, and we can have a book collective. Like, get the fuck out of here. You're not touching my books. No. It's definitely, I imagine it's a music collective Kindle. is like, hey, let's get together on Wednesday nights. And I'm going to sing what I've been working on. And you're going to sing what you're going to like play guitar and do whatever. And maybe we just like what? make magic together, man. <laughs> uh, I did a writing thing like that a long time ago. Um, it was the worst thing ever. Everybody sucks, including me, by the way. <laughs> I once uh, back in the pre-dom years went on a date with a guy who was sort of doing an acting collective and he was like yeah one thing we do 
and he was the, the he was the <laughs> He was the son of a, of, a, of a famous actress. So he was really kind of like riding on his mom's coattails. And he was like, yeah, one thing that we do is on Sunday nights, we just invite actors over and we just do scenes and we just like give notes to each other. And, you know, it's oh, great. <laughs> I was like, oh, so it's like a living hell. It was so Los Angeles. I've <laughs> I was so like, things like that. yeah, it was I'm terrible. Sure I'm judgy, but I've done every one of these collective things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have. I will do anything like that. I'm like, oh my god, let's get into the art together, guys. And then after, I even joined a Vespa club. Do you remember when I got a Vespa? And then I was like, I don't have anybody to ride with, so I don't care. I'm gonna go find friends. So I joined like a Vespa collective, and we all would meet for write ups. Wow, that was. Um, I have to say that was one of the sadder times of my life. <laughs> Bad to the bone. <laughs> Um, <laughs> not even motorcycles, Vespas. It's like bad to the bone. <laughs> hey, right, Vespa. everybody, there's a hill coming. Everybody's bike just slows all the way down. <laughs> but, 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 bad. 20 yeah, there's like guys going up Coldwater Canyon. Oh, God. <laughs> the camera is just focused at the crest of the hill. You know, but, 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 bad. But, 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 bad. Like nothing's showing up. Like, um, Hi, uh, sorry, I just want to, Vespa Collective, you're supposed to be cresting the hill as we say bad to the bone. Yeah. Hold sorry, on I'm one on second. I'm on a 150. I'm on a 150. Bubba, bubba, bad. It's your cue. Bubba, 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 bad. Guys, we're taking a really long time to get up this hill. You do your best Shakespeare tonight. I'll give you notes. <laughs> By the way, I brought uh, Ramona Quimby, age eight, back to you. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for loaning it to me. Guys, collectors are amazing. <laughs> so, um, uh, Bria asks Jasmine if she's older. What? <laughs> so, Bria, oh, yeah. So, Bria's like, I'm 27. How old are you, Jasmine? Oh, yeah. And Jasmine's like, I'm 31. And she goes, oh, my God, I thought you were younger than me. And Preston goes, you know that 31's older than 27, right? She goes, Preston, <laughs> don't play me like I'm some dumb broad, Preston, okay? I have a bone to pick with you because, like, it's like you don't like me or something. And he goes, oh, is this when the drama started? Is this what we're going to tell everybody? This is where it started. He's like, yeah, because we've got no, we don't have a brief. Like, is this where the drama started? And then um, uh, Jasmine's like, you guys all, you guys have had some beef. You guys have definitely had some beef in the past. And Preston's like, huh, no, I love you, Brielle. Like, honestly, I love you, Brielle. Brielle, I like really love you, and I will not go off on you for no reason later this episode. I, I absolutely love you. you for no reason in about ten minutes. <laughs> Guess what the girls are doing? Shots! Oh my God, we're, in, we're taking shots! 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 not going to attend the funeral and he's telling us about it and he cries. I feel terrible for him. That's gotta be, it's just gotta be a really gut wrenching position to be in. It's a terrible thing to go through in life anyway. And, um, I feel bad. So, so it's then, sad. Um, I don't have time to feel bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I feel bad. I <laughs> hey Martha, no time things. to feel bad right now. Hey, with Martha, recap. I hate talking about sad things. It's your girl, You're like, I don't have time to feel bad right now. I'm just trying to get this Vespa at the top of the hill. And I'm like, I'm still at the middle of the canyon right now oh. in my mind. So they get back to the house and Noelle's just looking around like, I'm rich now. And then it's all about the lobster. So they gather. Bria, we find out, is going to be the lobster chef. And mm. she's just pouring two canisters of Old Bay in yep. the pot. And she tells us she does this because you don't want seafood to taste like seafood, which is why I go through two packs of Old Bay seasoning. This is going to be you want fire. It, you want it to taste like pure sodium, you know? That's what seafood should taste like, according to Bria. Because also, last year, she had a bit of an issue. Sea, though, to, be, to be fair. That is true. Last year, I seem to remember she had a seasoning issue as well. She was an aggressive, aggressive seasoner. Um, listen, I love doing a healthy pour of Old Bay in my seafood boils. Like, I always do more than it calls for. I totally support that. But this was like two cans of it. That's... This is not going to be good for anyone's blood pressure. We're both very um, acutely aware of blood pressure things. This was this was triggering me. 
yeah, I don't know how to fix it. I'm on so many medications. Okay, we're not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to a blood pressure collective. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start talk about one. our blood pressure. Oh, I just got a, I just got a, a splinter. A splinter in New York City? Get a rope. Yeah. Okay, so Amir and Alex are outside uh, talking, and Amir's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I trust that cooking. I trust that cooking about as much as Natalie trusts me in uh, in the vineyard without her, which is not a lot. I'm going to die this summer. I'm really checking my, I'm checking my toe right now. No. Okay, I think I got it out. You all right? Just, well, I, you know. Are they the original wood floors in there or what? I can't tell. I mean, I this is, it feels like it feels like laminate. <laughs> I can't believe I got a splinter live on the air. This is so unprofessional. Actually, what's more unprofessional is me calling it out instead of just being a man and living through it. I'm going to join the Splinter Collective now. <laughs> yeah. For those victims of splinters. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk it out. Okay. Pretty much so back then, <laughs> um, inside, Jasmine and Nomel, Nomel and Jasmine, they're all Nomel. talking. And guess what Jasmine's question is? It's shocking. Jasmine literally never learns. She's like, are you single, Noel? Please tell me you're single. Please. I need to fix you up with someone. And Noel's like, I am single. <laughs> you know, I'm single, ready to mingle. You know I go, girls. <laughs> and she's like, um, you know, it's day one and everything, but you're not seeing anyone you want to pee on yet. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> and she's like, well, I mean, I've seen Alex out in Brooklyn, but it's not like we actually like talked or anything. But I did always think that he was cute and he has like this like nice little athletic build or whatnot. <laughs> I'm like, there have been three men who've walked in the house so far. Two of them are in relationships. <laughs> What are you at when when Noel when Jasmine's like see anyone you've got an eye on? It's basically between Milo and Alex and maybe the lobster. Like who who else would she have an eye on? That's true. Actually, there are, there are no options. Hey, wait a minute. There are no options. Fail, right? It is. I'm surprised they haven't. Maybe they'll bring in some more men over the course of the season because there are zero options for romance right now. Um, and also, I think that Alex has a girlfriend. That's going to be my prediction. That Alex has like a girlfriend he hasn't told anybody about. I know it just happened. Or last someone he's screwing with Nick, right? Because Nick, remember when Nick was like, "And here's my girlfriend, Tasia." Now since there's nobody in this house who will have sex with me, here's my girlfriend, Tasia. And they're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, that was, and it's still happening. I mean, she's around this season, so. Uh, Bria, Bria said then, so then Noelle's like, yeah, she's like, she sort of has an eye on Alex. Basically he's tall. He's tall. And he's got nice shoulders. And so Bria's like, well, summer's here. And I think that they went on some dates and Noelle's like, oh really? Like what kind of dates? Like, cause dates matter. And, um, she, Noelle basically is like, yeah, we, uh, she says that she talked to summer and summer said nothing's happened. So like they chilled yeah. and that's it. And Janice is like, mm. <laughs> Oh, I think I would have a longer conversation if it were me. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, she's smarter than that. She's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> like nothing happened. What, what does that mean? You know, she senses, well, and I don't know how she's not sensing it. I mean, summer's like dagger eyeing Alex, you know? Yeah, I think so Noelle's now, Noelle was doing that thing. I think where she was like interested in Alex, and Summer said, "Yeah, we chilled. It's fine." And Summer uh, Noelle probably knows there's more there, but she's not going to ask because she wants to have plausible deniability. Yes, good point. So now people are getting ready for dinner, and we see Nick's closet, and it's all white shirts, which I think is really mm -hmm. funny. He's like, "Listen, it's easier to match a hat." You know what I mean? Yeah, and then. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jordan is uh, having issues with her lace front on her wig, which I think is probably uh, um, it's probably foreshadowing her uh, her story about um, her hair loss. And then Preston has packed scissors. So I uh, hope you had fun checking your luggage. <laughs> Can't bring that on carry on, sir. <laughs> oh, so let's see. Preston and Jordan are setting the table outside and. Um, Noelle's like, yeah, I do not trust everyone's cooking. <laughs> that Bria was being a little heavy-handed with the Old Bay, but here's how you know uh, the difference between people. What they put in their grits. They either mm. put sugar or salt and pepper. And I am definitely a butter, cheese, and salt and pepper girl. And <laughs> that's that. <laughs> like, okay, was this your casting tape? Because that's literally all I needed. You could be on every <laughs> show on Bravo. 
Yeah. No, I think I loved her. I loved her for just like going on a random tangent about butter. Um, so they, Amir's like, hey guys, um, can we do a blessing for this food? Like maybe, uh, maybe we could make a video and put it on Zillow. And uh, they're like, okay, sure. Um, thanks for the seafood and let's turn up. Woo, let's eat. <laughs> they, they have, um, what's her buns do it? What's her name? I forgot. Oh, let's do some shots. She's oh, like, um, Shanice. Well, I just want to say, Shanice, yeah. It's like, God, thank you so much for seafood and for those towels and fuck bras, by the way. Those are a stupid invention. Also, yay, shots. I love shots. Yay, God. <laughs> Turn up. Yeah. By the way, we didn't mention there was one point where they all like went out and started jumping around on the tram trampoline and then Preston went and basically he at like as soon as you saw that trampoline, you're like, OK, well, congrats to one of you guys who's going to have a sprained ankle for the rest of the season. And sure enough, it was Preston. Preston got won the trampoline lottery. You can't trampolines aren't just something you can be like, oh, there's a trampoline. I'm going to go jump on that. I mean, adults can't do that. Kids are made out of elastic. They can do it. Adults can't. You can't do something new like that. Also, no. if you see like a, a random step in a place that you haven't tried out before, be careful. Don't just go up that step. Be like, that is new to me, and I'm an adult, and adults can't do things like this. <laughs> I have literally zero desire to jump on a trampoline. I don't see. The, I don't like. I just see it as sprained a sprained ankle device. That's all I see it as, or maybe a broken wrist if I'm if I'm so lucky. Oh. <laughs> What are you sad for me? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no trampolines don't do it for me. Um, uh, I don't and like I, trampolines either. I feel they feel like I'm dying. I don't like that. I'm not in a yeah. hurtful way, but just like a oh my god, I'm dying. I'm about to be in heaven. That kind of way. I'm ready to die. <laughs> it's like the kind of like thrill where you're falling. I don't like that falling feeling. Okay, so they're eating, and Jasmine's like, how's the pasta? Does everybody like the pasta? I made the pasta. Do you like it? Do you like the pasta? I made the pasta. Do you like it? Do you like it? Does that pasta taste single? Tell me if it tastes single. And Alex goes, it's cold, but it's good, though. I was like, <laughs> sir. Thanks, person who did nothing. Thank, yeah, thanks, person who did nothing. Just say... It's good. But that's, by the way, this is what drove me nuts about him last last year is that he's like, oh, all nice and enlightened, but he's like an asshole. And he would, oh, he did this last year too. He would just say like a real dick thing. And uh, I can't stand that. I can't stand just people who honest. are. Yeah, no one's yeah, just being honest. Your honesty. Okay. Save yeah. it for the newsletters. Also, like, honest, I was really upset. This is the moment where I wanted to find out how this over seasoned food was and no one even commented on it. Also, I thought it was strange that they were bashing open the. The lobsters with the mallets those are like crab mallets and like i feel like is that the way one gets into a lobster tail don't you just go in with like maybe some scissors or something down the middle and crack it open like that i don't know something felt wrong i don't know i don't know how any of that stem so um summer is like i have a question for you jasmine why no drinking why <laughs> i'm let people take it as a personal affront and Jasmine's like, oh, well, you remember that party we had last year? That was pretty much the last time. Oh, you you mean the one where Silas got all mad at you because you had the nerve to talk back to him and then degraded you in front of all of your friends? And instead of breaking up with him, you promised to stop drinking like that was all your fault? Are you fucking kidding me? Am I supposed to be on your side? Yeah. So Jasmine's like, yeah, I just really wanted to refocus. It's just going to be a dry summer, and I absolutely don't have a baby inside me. And Bria's like, yeah, because I thought she was pregnant. No, I totally am not 100% pregnant whatsoever. I'm, I'm definitely not. Definitely, you know, definitely, definitely not pregnant. that guy humiliated me in front of my friends and degraded me and treated me like absolute shit? I remember that being the night where I said, God, I want that man's baby inside of me. <laughs> Not that I have it right now. I'm just not drinking. Good old fashioned not drinking. I've never seen the internet m more disappointed than when uh, Jasmine announced her pregnancy, and like so many people who follow this show were like, "Ah," because they're like, the dreams of her escaping from Silas just evaporated in that it's moment. True, though, I remember that because I remember the 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 way they word everything in these headlines. You know, it's all clickbait, but it was like. Silas and Jasmine have huge announcement about their relationship. I'm like, well, they were already married, so they're divorced. Like, thank God. And it was, no, 
I'm preggers. I'm preggers. <laughs> Bringing another Silas into the world. Can't wait. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. So then Noel is like, "How the fuck do you eat crap like this?" <laughs> And um, Jordan is like, so, Alex, you recently had an event that you didn't invite everyone to. And he's like, oh, really? I didn't? She goes, no. <laughs> Which is, again, funny because she literally had a trip, an exclusive trip, and she didn't invite people. Yes. So we're starting, we're finally starting the drama of the episode. It's all been nice times, but now we're going to get into it. So Bria's like, well, I mean, I knew I was invited. And Summer says, well, I wasn't invited, even though I was in New York at the time. And he goes, well, he's telling us, I have a beautiful music co community, and it's called Fill the Space. And <laughs> we've been hosting intimate music experiences for four years now. And yeah, I'm the host of it, but it's a community. And if you're subscribed to the list, you get an invitation. It's that simple. Mm. He's actually kind of guilting them. Like, actually, you weren't supporting me. Yeah. So Jordan is like, well, I was wondering if you could explain why that was. And then Shanice whispers to Noel. Uh, Shanice is just like, by the way, um, there's like a bottle to kill over there. Could you just like put it over by your leg so I don't tip it over? <laughs> this way your leg can tip it over instead. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Um, so Alex is basically like, yeah, well, you know, I didn't invite everyone. And first of all, I didn't realize that Summer was in New York. And had I known, I would have invited her. And she's like, um, can I call bullshit on that? Because we had a group FaceTime that morning and you saw that I was in Jordan's living room. So that doesn't feel true. He's not only a liar, he's just a terrible liar. Yeah. Um, so Alex is like, but it was posted on social media. And, you know, like people who went there interacted with that page and got tickets. And Jasmine's like, oh, so Bria's the only one that gets an individual invite? And Bria's like, Bria's like it wasn't like that. I mean, okay, I love you, Summer, but it wasn't like that, you know? And you and Jordan went out to dinner, and I didn't get an invite to that. This is when we enter the I love you, but fight. Because now everything that everyone says is, I love you, but, like, I didn't get invited to that. So Summer's like, when? To, like, the steakhouse. And, like, I love you, but I did not get invited to the steakhouse. And Summer's like, no, listen, Bria, I love you. But like, that was like, we're talking about something that was like a whole production. I was like staying, I was staying with Jordan. And Jordan, I love you, but I was staying with you, Jordan. And it was just like, I wanted to take her out to dinner. So I like, I love you, Bria. But like, I was just taking her out to dinner as a thank you. Okay, I love you. But I love you. But like, I invited you to my party when I had a party, even though I love you. And Summer's like, no, 100%. I love you. But like, still, 100%, you invited me. She goes, yeah, but I love you. And my, like, I mean, my party was in the group chat. We talked about it. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> she says, but Bria, I, wa I wasn't in town. I live in Los Angeles. That's why I didn't go to your party. I mean, like, I love you, but I live in Los Angeles, which I also love. And then Preston just yells, what the fuck is happening right now? And they're like, oh. <laughs> Summer's like, and I just want to just reiterate to the table to clarify for, for Preston, who wants to know what the fuck is going on right now. I love you, Bria. I just want to say, I love you, Bria. No, but I love you. And Preston's like, no, but I oh love you. my God. Da. <laughs> and Bria says, Look, if you want me to leave, Preston, 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 if you want me to leave, just say it, Preston, and I'll leave. <laughs> Why does it have to turn into like, oh, my God, they're telling me to leave? Like, literally, there was, I, what can I, I, I'm missing the connective tissue for this discussion. Was it edited I love out? And Bria just loses the thread and just starts yeah. like arguing whatever. Oh, yeah, so you want like, me to leave now? Because I was just saying I love you to somebody. So, okay, I guess I can't say I love you to somebody because now, now I'm being asked to leave. Noelle's like, you're not leaving, Bria. We are still eating this shitty, shitty food. And Preston's like, that better not be to me because you lost your mind if it was. Look at me. I am tired of everything being an argument. It's like, sir, you were the one who literally. We're literally making this so crazy right now. <laughs> Uh, and she's like, oh, you want me to leave then? Is that what you're saying? Oh my God, did you pack my suitcases? Am I leaving now? Should oh, I you're going to cry you? now? You Uber? You're going to cry? You're going to cry now? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to cry now? But I love I you, love but you're going to cry? I love you, though. I literally love you, but you're going to cry right now? Like, literally, you're like my favorite person here, but you're literally going to cry like a fucking bitch right now? You're going to cry? I literally love you? And he tells us, I know I'm going through a lot and that's annoying, but she's coming for me. And I am, <gasps> listen, if you want to push me, then push me. If you want to make a scene, then I can make a movie. 
So of course, Bria storms off. And she's like, okay, you got the attention on you, Preston. You got it. You got it. <laughs> and he's Are you like, going to oh. cry in your room for two days? Is that what you're going to do? Go cry in your room? Go ahead. Cry in your room for two days. Whatever. Twitter it. Twitter it. <laughs> or X it, formerly known as Twitter. And he goes, I will. And she goes, good. That's what I thought. He goes, good night. <laughs> I'm enjoying these crab legs, though. Tweet. <laughs> Good night. I love you, by the way, but good night. Love you. Retweet. <laughs> Quote, tweet, love you. Hashtag. <laughs> Fake ass bitch. Preston's like, I'm actually exhausted with it, to be honest. Like, Bria, you know, <sighs> Bria and I talk like every day. Like, I love her, but like, I'm exhausted by it. So inside, Bria's like, but I love him. I love him. I don't know why he wants me to leave. And Summer's <laughs> telling her, if you love him, you owe it to him to have a conversation. Come on. This wasn't about you. This was about me getting mad at Alex. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Stick to the script, girl. Preston's like, I mean, guys, we don't all live in the same city. So then Bria and Summer come back. And Bria's like, Preston, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's like, me too. Me too, He's bitch. Like, oh my God, I'm too. so sorry too. <laughs> so you want just... me to leave? No, I don't want you to leave. Okay, so you want me to stay. I say I want they you just to hug. Stay either. <laughs> I'm going to stay. <laughs> Then Amir does steps into his favorite thing, which is cleaning things up. So he now starts <laughs> just clearing all the tables for the rest of the episode. Yeah, where he's like, I'm the only normal one in this house. That's his favorite thing to do. So yeah. he's doing that. And then he tells us, yeah, Bria's the only one that gets to throw a tantrum and then come back and be like, I'm sorry, I love you. Like, what? Yeah, but <laughs> Preston did too. How come Bria's the only one who gets called out for throwing a tantrum? And then uh, we now pivot for, to a new variation on the I love you fight to the um, excessive apologies. So now Preston's like, you know what? Like, I was just like upset because it was just like the moment. Like, it wasn't you. It wasn't you. And I, apo and, 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 and I apologize to you for no, that because no, I love no, you. No, 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 I apologize because I was disrespectful to you, especially at this time. You don't need that. And I apologize. No, and I love you. I love you for that. But I, I apologize because, like, like, I love you. I just, I, I love you and I apologize for that. Listen, I want me to leave. I want me to leave right now. I want me to leave to Apology City because that's what I owe you. I owe you. An and you know what? I want to leave my soul and go hug your soul together because I just like love you so much and I apologize. Love I you. apologize. Love you. Oh. Love you. And then it cuts to Noelle splurting herself in the face with lobster juice. She's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now Summer is like, okay, so we all love each other, and the new girl is covered in lobster jizz. So, <laughs> Alex, you said you didn't know I was in New York, but we were on FaceTime that morning. So, what the fuck? <laughs> I, by the way, I respect Summer so much. She just picked right back up again. She was like, I'm making it, I'm putting a bookmark in my fight because I did not get to where I need to be. So we like, and we're back. Another season of people calling me boring. Got it. <laughs> we are back. So um, Nick is like, yeah, she just wants to know why you didn't invite her. And she's like, that part. Because you said it's because you didn't know I was in New York, but you saw me at Jordan's apartment that morning. And meanwhile, Noelle's still on the side, but just making all sorts of Phaedra faces. <laughs> she's just making faces. She's so funny. <laughs> so Summer's like, the issue is you not being honest, Alex. And Amir, oh. This, this makes me crazy. He's like, um, why don't you just tell him the answer you want? Because he's telling you his truth and you're not accepting it. So just tell him what you want. Him he's not saying his truth, actually. Yeah, he's not. He's, I hate that. The, he's he's like not. a crazy woman and he's like telling you his truth. When you have to resort to his truth or this is my truth. It's not the truth. Tell me the fucking truth and stop with the branding yeah. it as yours. You don't get your own version. So Jasmine's like, hey, Martha, I feel like he's lying. And Summer goes, yeah, I do feel like he's lying. Because how are you on a Zoom call, but you don't invite us? You don't invite the person who does live in New York. You don't invite the person you've been inside of. That's a fucking problem. And it's like. <laughs> so now everyone's like, oh, my God, they had sex. Did they have sex? I knew they had sex. I didn't know they had sex. I love I that it. they had sex. I knew what the second they I'm had so sex. sorry. I apologize. I love you so much. How did everybody not know they had sex? How did I know? But nobody knew. I guess yeah. I just assumed. Well, the it. only one, who, I think the only one who did not know was Jasmine, which is funny because she's so self-involved <laughs> that she doesn't even yeah. know this very obvious gossip. And also, no one likes her, so no one keeps in touch with Jasmine. They just see her at this summer. They're like, "Oh, it's yeah. Jasmine still here." <laughs> oh, even, I'm married. That's why. So <laughs> even Milo and Noel knew. So um, 
Uh, so basically, yeah, they're all they're all weighing in like, wow. So Alex is like, well, to be honest, I wasn't paying attention. I'm just being very honest. I'm, I'm a very honest person. So Summer's like, well, I guess our perceptions are very different then. Yeah. So then she goes, have I invited you? Have I not invited you guys to something? And Alex is like, listen, I've been to events that other people were not invited to or I, like where she's not there. And she goes, who's she? And they could say Jasmine. <laughs> so he's smart. He's turning this on how much Jasmine is yeah. hurt in this situation. So Jasmine's like, yeah, I mean, I'm just like curious, like why are there things I've not been invited to, Martha? You know, like, hey, Martha. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, I've been really disconnected from the group. And I call on the girls as like a married person to single sad people. And like I check on them like, hey, how are you doing now that you don't since you don't have a husband yet? Like, are you OK? Are you coping? Do you want me to bring you some canned goods? And like there's just like no reciprocity. And it's just been like real, real dry, probably like, you know, their dating life since they're so single. It's sad. The phone just doesn't ring. Like, you know, you wouldn't know each other if it, if it was if it wasn't for me, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I just love calling the girls and supporting them, Martha. Like, sometimes they'll call them and just say things like, listen, here's my advice for the day. We're all dying, but you're dying alone. <laughs> okay, good talking to you. Uh, so, um, and we see all these, like, several photos where the group has, like, done things. Like, a large amount of the group without Jasmine. Well, Jasmine. It wasn't just, like, two or three people here. It was, like, there was one photo where, like, they were all lined up like against like a railing or something and just everyone but Jasmine. And they know it too. It's like they can sense that these pictures are being shown on the screen right now because they are all just <laughs> completely silent, just looking at her. No one is going to jump on that at all, right? They're, they're so, all like, should I just move to the left because I know you're about to put up a photo to the right of me? <laughs> How should I stand? So Noelle's like, Jasmine, where do you stand with everybody then? Because I guess someone has to ask you because these people clearly do not care. And she's like, well, I mean, I feel like I'm not as close with, she looks around the table. She's like, Jordan, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'll go with Jordan. I'm just going to focus on one today. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So yeah. Jordan's like, well, we could have that conversation. I would love that. Just not in public. And I agree with you, but we're having a group conversation about invitations. So I brought it up. So one might say I'm inviting you to talk about it later. <laughs> See? Wordplay, invitation, maybe you don't understand that concept. I don't know. So, so Jordan's like, there. Up and Amir's like, I'll do some dishes, but not all of these dishes. <laughs> Love, that's just his storyline now. It's like, the dishes. Let's let's yeah. go see what Amir's doing with the dishes. Now it's bedtime, and Summer and Jordan are talking about how Alex's response didn't even make any sense. And Jordan's mm -hmm. like, yeah, but then you made that like inside me comment. So are you sure it's not about something else with him? <laughs> well... Obviously. Yeah. I love that she said that. I love that she caught him off guard. You know? I love that she took ownership of that moment and was like, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna confront you with your fuckboyness. So now it's the I morning. Didn't. Actually, I you didn't, didn't like that. No, because it's like that whole vibe of like, oh my god, I'm not with anybody, you're not with anybody, you're a fuck boy, I'm a fuck girl. I'll just do whatever I want. Like we can just do whatever I want. And then when you feel slighted, it's like, you've been inside me. Like, that's like the most important thing that someone could have done. Like, I can't believe you would treat me that way after you've been inside of me. <laughs> this is casual or not? I don't get it. Yeah, I, that's a fair point. Um, so it's now it's the morning and Amir is scrubbing the fridge door. He's like, this is like my most favorite cleaning product in the world. Like, <laughs> this is his A story for the season, Cle scrubbing things down. And um, they're just like getting ready. Noelle has a hangover drink of cranberry and lime. It's the next morning I mean, it's, and they're all enjoying themselves. And now Alex is in the truth booth and he's like, I can feel the drama. Summer wants to put the pressure on me, but you're not going to get a rise out of me unnes unnecessarily. I'm not built like that. I'm built for oh, okay. Okay. music collectives yeah. and being a cousin to a famous person. I'm built I'm for that. I'm built for sharing G chords. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jasmine is telling, she's on the phone with Silas and um, she got flowers or something. And he's like, I'm going to live vicariously through you. Would you please tell people to keep it down while I work? That would be great. <laughs> Do it now. Okay. I sent you two uh, computer monitors. I could just set them up on the dining room table and just make sure they're just exactly where everyone's congregating and then tell them all to shut up. Thank you so much. <laughs> So she talks about how they went to counseling and they're like doing so much better now. 
And he goes, babe, I'm going to teach you something new, a new word, Dulce Venia. That means you're the woman. Do my dishes, God damn it. <laughs> dishes are filthy. She's like, oh, my God, I love you. He's like, I love you, babe. I did not love Jasmine's discussion of counseling because she goes, yes, Silas and I, we went back to counseling and I'm not perfect. I've definitely made mistakes. It's like, um, yeah, but like, well, you have made a mistake, which is getting involved with Silas. But like also, where is, how about also like saying something? I thought she was going to say Silas realized that he, his priorities were not right and he had to update the way he talked to me, da 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 da, da. But it was more her being like, no, I, I, I made mistakes. I was like, this is not good. Yeah. This is not what I want to hear. Yeah, me neither. So um, now they're going to boat day and Preston is throwing it and he's talking about his father's funeral and um, that they decide that they're going to have fun instead and be a family, be family to each other. Yeah. So now Jordan and Jasmine have their conversation and um, I would not want to be on the outs with Jordan. I'll just say that right mm -mm. now. Jordan is cold blooded. <laughs> yes. Jordan like literally will just cut you and not care. And that's yeah. kind of what she's doing right now. So Jordan is like, uh, I just wanted, I didn't want to have a Dr. Phil session today. So Jasmine's like, well, I feel like we haven't been on the same page in a long time, Martha. Okay. And I was like, I don't, you know, what's going on? I had to ask myself, did I do something? Did I? What's your perspective, single person? And it's just been so long <laughs> since I've been single. I just forget how you think. But go ahead. <laughs> She's like, well, I think I definitely pulled away because I was mistrusting what I was seeing. It just like made me feel like I don't know who this is. And I was freaked out by, by it, quite frankly. And it made me feel like I don't know if I can trust this person, honestly. Jasmine's yeah, like, last year, I was just getting used to my marriage. And I mean, you're such a straight shooter. If you didn't like something, I would guess that you'd say. She did say. Why are you acting like she didn't say? She did say, Jasmine, here's the problem. People do tell you and you don't fucking care and you keep acting like an asshole anyway. Here's the real answer to this. Why did you pull away? I don't like you anymore. You're an asshole with your boyfriend and nobody likes you. So stop. Yeah. Jordan's like, when I first met Jasmine, she had like a shaved Skrillex haircut. And we see it. It's like she was like edgy. She should probably like edgy and cool and not like the type of person who is just going to lean into, you know, I'm mar I'm a married person now and I have to do everything for my man. I've got to be so like weird. make dinner for him. I was taking this music class because I take these like, well, not a class. I was like taking a tutorial, doing a tutorial or something online for like music production or whatever. And yeah. this guy was like, you know who gave me this plugin? Skrillex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that weird? I mean, it was twice in one day. What, what does that mean? It means that please welcome the new cast member of Real Housewives of Somewhere, Skrillex. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why Padma just introduced him. But... <laughs> Skrillex just pop up on people's, in people's life? That's bizarre, right? Well, hey, Skrillex, he... are you out there listening to me right now with your math son? <laughs> I feel you, Skrillex, okay? And I love you. I love your work, bro. Give me a call. Well, I, all I have to say is for the people for whom Skrillex pops up a lot, those are people who probably drink a lot of coffee because all his music is like... I have been addicted to coffee lately. Do you think it's all connected? <laughs> I'm so addicted I had to buy decaf coffee because I was like, I'm going to give myself a heart attack. With all this. <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. The point is, Skrillex, I'm here for you. Okay, I'm a beginner, so give me, give me some knowledge. Drop some knowledge on me, Skrill. Okay, so basically, <laughs> Jordan's like, you're annoying, and Jasmine's like, but I call you, and I'm just trying to survive as a married person. Like, I get, I get that you don't get it. Okay, like, <sighs> old maid, <laughs> I get it. But <laughs> it's hard for us out here in the married world. Uh, so, um. Uh, anyway, uh, so Jordan's you know, you know like, friend, I'm, I know I'm skipping notes. I got lost. <laughs> I was still thinking about Skrillex. We see text to prove because Jordan's like, well, I sent you a text and you never answered me. So then we see this wall of text and um, then we know that Jordan really needs business because at the bottom of the text, it says you stopped sharing location. Yeah. Jasmine Ellis Cooper. Dun, yeah. Dun, dun. And Jasmine's like, um, she tells us, I don't want to hear about a single text that I didn't respond to. I mean, look at my call log. It's extensive, which is like, yeah, I mean, uh, it looks like they both were looking for, well, it looks like I mean, when, when someone says like, I wrote a single text and you didn't write back to me, it looks like Jordan had, Jordan was, was done. Jordan was done. I was just looking to hang 
something, like find something to hang the the ending of this friendship on. Like, you didn't write me back, so our friendship is over. Right, so She also wrote her a wall of text, and she didn't get a response. And Jasmine's mm. one of those people who's like, oh, I'm not going to read your wall of text with your grievances and address those. I'm going to instead make you fucking listen to my, me monologue on the phone. Right. Like, I'm not going to take two minutes to give you what you want. I'm going to take an hour of your time talking about what a victim I am. You know, right. Don't you have those yeah. people who refuse to text you back? They just leave you voice messages. Like, I'm not going to sit here and take five minutes to listen to you monologue. I asked you one yeah. question. Just answer the I, question. I definitely have one or two friends where if I text, they return, they respond by calling. And that's one of my least favorite habits because yeah. if I want to speak on the phone, I would have called you or I would have said, Hey, can we talk? But when you like, I don't, the only exception is if someone's driving and they call me and say, Hey, sorry, I'm driving. Just be easier for me to no, do this. That's, that's okay. I'm not doing it with that either because then <laughs> they call and then you're like, what? And they, they're like, Oh, well, this is just easier than sending a bunch of texts. No, it's not. It's easier for you because now you get to bitch about all your day of errands <laughs> and how the kids were doing this and how no one respects you. And that works. Let me add an ass. Let me revise it. Let me revise it. If I'm saying, hey, what time do you want to meet for dinner tonight? And then they call and they say, sorry, I'm driving. It'd be easier to do this. I'm okay with like figuring out a plan on the phone. That's okay. But otherwise, yeah, I don't want, I don't want, if I text you, don't respond with a call. So those people, you then you have to like respond back two hours later. So that way, hopefully yeah. they're away from their phone. It's more inconvenient for them. I hate that. I also, it's 2024. I don't answer my phone. Who does? It's dangerous. I know. It's so, literally okay, the so worst. Jasmine wants to improve this, and Jordan's just like, me too, but she clearly does doesn't. not. <laughs> no, Jordan's does like, not want. Jordan's like, you're dead to me. So I had your funeral already. So you can yeah. keep screaming at the walls, whatever you want, but you're a ghost. So, so then they're partying outside. Um, Noelle is like, if you had to name yourself after, after an alcohol, what would you name yourself? And Nick is like, Moet. And Nicole's, Noelle's like, okay, cool, but it has to coordinate with your name. So there's no pun there. Can you work on your wordplay, please? <laughs> Moet, stupid. So I didn't really understand this, did you? Well, I think that she meant like, I guess, she, I guess what Noelle was trying to do was um, like, like the, she wanted the, the, alcohol to mix with the word with the name nick she wanted wordplay i feel like she was adapting a sorority game and it was not it was not landing i say that as someone who like after when i joined my fraternity i just there were definitely like certain things i tried to like introduce to my friends i don't even remember what they were but they just did not it, it's some things just have to stay they don't it just does not translate outside of the frat so um, Preston's like, I would be like Andre or Nick Andre, huh? It was weird. So now Alex and Summer are talking. And Alex is like, hey, let's talk about last night. Like, why'd you say that? She's like, um, because it felt like you were excluding us. I mean, me, like when someone has been inside of you, there's like a certain respect, like a love you have for each other. And he's like, what? It's like, whoa, <laughs> now she's saying she loves me? Oh, no. It's like, we do. It's like we hooked up. We are, we are not in love. And so I don't think that she was saying that they that they they're in love. I think that she was saying there is like a a tenderness and care that that relationship needs to have. I think that's what she's saying. And he's like, "Whoa, she's in love with me. Whoa, women are crazy. Look at everyone for summer, everyone. She's a hysterical woman." Yeah. Um so she's like, "Yeah, people she was like, people have sex. They enjoy life. Like, who cares? But you feel like it needs to be a secret? I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. And, she, yeah, because she's like, everyone already knew and everything. And he was like, yeah, because I told Jordan and she told someone else. No, so here's says, was, everybody knew. He goes, yeah, because you told them. Oh, That's how you told Jordan. already knew. And she's like, well, I told Jordan and she told yeah. everybody. Yeah. I mean, look, on his end, you can't just fuck within the friend group and expect that no one's going to know. And, well, but, but on her end, why are you using that like a weapon at a group dinner? Fucking I'll weird. tell you why. Because as a fuckboy, he tries to keep this stuff discreet so it seems more gentlemanly. He seems like more like a more evolved person. But he, what he really wants to do is not get the word out that he's like, you know, a big old fuckboy. So that way he can be a big old fuckboy with other people. And people don't like, he, he doesn't want people to realize he's like this. So he wants everyone to stay quiet about it so he can maintain his image. And she's like, no, 
I'm going to put it right out there. I'm going to put it out there that you are a fuck boy. And that's why I liked it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm generally not on Alex's side for anything. I just don't understand the whole, like, let's have a casual hookup. And then I, well, I agree with that. The least casual about it. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be zero. I'm going to show zero cash at all after it. Right. But you know, you do you, but also not you, but her, but also he's been a fuck boy long enough that he should know that's, this is what actually always happens is that it, there's o feelings always get involved. And, um, and him not inviting Summer when she's there in New York, he knows that that is going to piss her off. Exactly, yeah. Well, and I think that's the big thing too, right? It's like, and now you're saying you didn't know I was in town? Like, what the hell, you fucking weirdo? Yeah. But, you know, he's trying to make you crazy and now you're confronting him in front of everybody looking, guess what, crazy, you know? And then like he I can say like, well, Look at she's her. Crazy. She's wild. She yeah, just wants not me my so fault. Bad. Look how crazy I make her. She wants to move so quickly. I just need to take it slow. Yeah. I want to take things They're slow right now. I'm figuring stuff out. That's the problem. Yeah, I'm figuring stuff out. So Shanice is like, okay, well, basically, Summer's like, okay, look, I set expectations on the situation, and you're not responsible for those expectations. So I'm sorry. And he's like, okay. And then Shanice is like, you guys are having so many serious conversations. Let's take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. So then they all just start dancing and twerking and stuff like that. And that's that for Summer's House. Summer House Malto's Vineyard. Welcome back home show. I know. I can't believe we talked about it for so long. Because <laughs> like not a huge amount happened, but I actually really, really enjoy this show and I love the cast chemistry. So I'm looking forward to this season. Yeah, me too. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for being here. Go get tickets for our Europa trip and also our show in LA in May. Those are those tickets are at watchwhatcrappens.com, video on Patreon, and so are the bonus episodes. Um, we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.